Welcome back. This is the next recording for standard 4 MBT5 number in operations in base 10. Key academic vocabulary to review is the word product, which is also the answer or result of a multiplication problem. So just a friendly reminder that the assessment is coming up. So it is for unit 2 and the date is 10:29, 10:30. Again, remember, the, these dates will change from year to year, but the standard will stay the same. And there it is, MBT5. Multiply up to four digits by a one-digit number. What does this problem look like? There it is. So we're going to set it up, go through all the different strategies, and then you can watch as many times as you want. And feel free to give feedback or comments and let me know what helped you. Here we go, number three. Which strategies for multiplying 5 and 629 should result in the correct product? There's the word product. Select all that apply. Let me reread that. And remember the last video for problem number two, academic vocabulary, important words. We started putting it in pink. Remember, your math teacher, use whatever strategies or colors or annotating your math teacher has you use. These are some that I use with my kiddos. Um, so feel free to adapt or change it. I like using them in pink because the words really pop out. Which strategies for multiplying 5 and 629 should result in the correct product? Select all that apply. Now remember, this is test prep 101, so terminology. When you see the word all, that almost always, all the time, means at least two or more answers. Okay, and I know it's tough to see over there, so I'll put it down here. Two plus answers. On these assessments, it's almost always two. Okay? All right, so let's get straight to it. I love this problem because it's partial product. And I like area model too, so I'll write the word partial product. And what does that mean? Here's how partial product is solved. But first, let's just scan each problem and find some similarities and maybe some differences. So for instance, in problem A, 629 times 5. C, same thing. D, same thing. B, same thing. Okay? Notice how they start off the multiplication problem. They have 3,000, 3,000. Then look where 3,000 goes down here. It's at the bottom. It's up here. So just scanning will help you start getting an idea of what you're looking at. But here's how partial product works. Let's do ones, tens, hundreds. You need to know your place value chart. It is critical. I know it's small, but then we separate it and we draw lines through it. Most time when I have students get problems wrong, it's just simply they do not know the place value chart. So it goes ones, tens, hundreds. Let's do that for each one. Ones, tens, hundreds. The O stands for ones. So O equals ones. The T stands for tens, and the H stands for hundreds. And let's do the last one. Now here's why I like partial product. It forces you to show your work. So I'm gonna draw lines going out for each one. I apologize if I get a little sloppy. I'm recording and doing this at the same time all by myself, so I get a little sloppy sometimes. I apologize. Anyways, so I drew a line straight out from the bottom and then a line on the side. Now here's how this works. Most of the time, I prefer when you do partial product, you start in the ones place and you multiply ones times ones. Okay? So for instance, I'm going to come down to this one. This is the same thing as five times nine. 5 times 9 is 45. Check, check. Okay. Notice how I went from A and I jumped down to D. When you are solving problems, especially on the test, go wherever you want to. Okay. You can start with any single problem. 
and you can jump around like I was. Next, you go to the tens place. Five times two, or is it five times 20? This is five times two tens. Five times two is 10, and I add a zero. I get 100. And now we need to multiply the hundreds place. We will take five times 600. Notice how I underline the zeros, okay? All I need to focus now on is what is five times six? Five times six is 30, and then I add two more zeros. A lot of times students make mistakes because they just forget a zero. So 45 is correct, 100 is correct, 3,000 is correct. We are making sure that which one of these is done correctly. So far, it looks like this one works. Let's just make sure that it was added correctly. Five plus zero plus zero is five, four, one. This should work, okay? Let's cruise over here. Now, if you took five times nine, it's not gonna be the same process. So for this one, they are starting with the hundreds place first. So, so they took five times 600. Just as we did over here, five times six is 30. Then we add two zeros. Five times six, 30. I add two zeros. Next, they go five times 20. Remember, this is two tens. Two tens is the same thing as 20. Five times two is 10, and I add a zero. And then they go to the ones. Five times nine is 45. So check, check, check. Notice how these two answers are exactly the same. So when it says all, this one works, this one works. Maybe there's more, because look, this is 3,145. This is 3,145. They all have the same exact answers. This one started with the ones place first, went ones, tens, hundreds. This one went backwards, hundreds, tens, ones. Let's see what's going on up here. It looks like they're starting with a bigger number, so it's going to be 5 times 600. And again, 5 times 6 is 30. I add the two zeros. So, okay, this works, just like that problem. Then I go five times 20. Remember, this is two tens. Two tens is written as two with a zero after it. Five times two is 10, and then I add a zero. Okay, this one works too. What is different between this one and this one? In math, especially on these assessments, one digit can be different in one problem, and that changes everything. Let me repeat that again. Just one digit can be written differently than another problem and it changes everything. So let's see, this down here, five times nine. Five times nine is 45. Where are they getting the zero from? Okay, this is wrong. In fact, if you add this up, this is wrong too. So this is not correct. Problem A, wrong. Let's go to problem C. Again, they're going backwards on partial product. They're starting with the hundreds place first. So let's check it out. Five times 600, five times six is 30. Please master your multiplication facts as fast as possible. I add two zeros, okay? Just like this problem and this problem, exactly the same. See how they're trying to make this as similar as possible? 10 here, five times two. It's not five times two, this is five times 20. It is two tens. Remember, T stands for tens place. Five times two is 10, but I need to add a zero. Remember, five times two is 10, but this is five times 20. So that's why I add in a zero there. Don't forget that. And then the last one, we have five times nine is 45, so this works, this works, but notice this one, it has a mistake. That one zero, just one zero. That only has one zero, it should have two zeros. Five times 20 is not 10, five times 20 is 100. So check this out, to make this pop. 
here was the mistake. And where was the mistake over here? Right here. So these are not correct. In fact, if you added this, let's see, 0 plus 0 is 5, 4 plus 1 is, wait, that's not right. Okay, so there's problems. There's problems with C and A. The only two that are correct are B and D. Now that went about 10 minutes, so it went a little longer than usual. Of course, when you master this process down, you can do it much faster, and you could probably knock this problem out in anywhere from 3 to 4 minutes at the most. Thank you, and practice. Bye-bye.